Alan Shremantin announcing his alliance with Abu Sakara and other political entities. Um, I'll read a story. Um, there's a, quite a few stories around this, but let's begin with the first one. 2024 polls. Alan teams up with Abu Sakara's national interest movement. So we have here independent presidential candidate Alan John Shremantin has announced a strategic partnership with the National Interest Movement, led by former Convention People's Party's uh, flag bearer, Abu Sakara, ahead of the 2024 elections. Now, this collaboration, operating under the banner Alliance for Revolutionary Change, was unveiled through a statement released on Thursday, April 4th, 2024. Now, in the statement, Mr. Chairman, I outlined the objectives of the alliance, which is slated uh, for official launch on Wednesday, April 17th. Now, the primary goal of the ARC is to rally Ghanaians from diverse backgrounds with a particular emphasis on engaging the youth and women in order to elect the first independent candidate as president of Ghana. Now, the statement emphasized the need to break the cycle of poverty and set the country on a new path to prosperity. Now, highlighting the failure of the dominant political parties, the NDC and AMPP, the alliance seeks to address the fundamental changes, uh, challenges sorry, of development in Ghana over the past 32 years, and also to end the divisiveness in Ghanaian politics. The winner-takes-all syndrome and the lack of continuity in Ghana's government projects. The ARC... Uh, plans to form an all-inclusive government of national unity representing various sectors of society to work towards a national development plan uh, that will guide Ghana's economic transformation. And it's a statement, a full statement uh, from them uh, signed by um, the Honorable Alan Shermantin, uh, who's the founder and leader of Movement for Change. It's there in the story. All right, so let me start with uh, Kabuti. Well, I, 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 I want to be very blunt here. Mm. You know, in Ghana, we have what we call two, two go through, third shows up. Mm. Having two go through, mm. and the third one shows up. Mm. It happens in, in, even in, 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 our, in our religion. Mm. Traditional religion was here before the uh, Christian and Muslim religions came in here. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about religion, it's mm. Christian and Muslim religion. Mm. Mm. The rest are around. The traditional, in fact, yeah, the tra yeah, yeah. traditional religion is here. Yeah. But when, when is a traditional holiday? Is there one? <laughs> there's none. Mm. So there's, a, there's one for Christians, there's one for Muslims. You can't change it. In fact, there's a couple for Christians. I'll push you to the, uh, the, the, the other one, angle. the Easter one. I'll push you to the other one, football. It's Hats and Kotoko. Mm. Olympus is a very powerful team. Yeah. Only that day, only Rosalinda, only Bobo, only Ashiaba. <laughs> I, I will see. I mean, that is. The, <laughs> only do so, do so. That is the traditional Ghana team. Yeah. Only daddy. Yeah, only I know, daddy. I know. Yeah. But it's has some cut off. Fine now, finish. Yeah. Go through the history books, they yeah. are there. Yeah. And when you go to I think even globally it's like that. If you go to the UK, that, you have the Tories That's how the game is. The, you know politics, it's been the UP tradition yeah. against the CPP. I mean, and they they will change uh, and then they will, you know they can couch into colours and come back. That's it. So in, in 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 the facts are clear. I I love one thing. It's good for our democracy. For people to see the options of coming together also exist. You know, the Great Alliance, all those, you know, the, some parties coming together, the DPP and the rest joining NDC some time ago, yeah. the MPP also having their, you know, so it's not new, it's not novel. It's a good thing. But we, you have to weigh the strengths of who and who are coming together. So I'll say, unfortunately, they will not pull any surprise. That's, but that's, that's to tell you the fact. I mm. mean, it's like two tabletop sellers, with all due respect. It's like two tabletop sellers coming together against industry giants. Okay. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. You see, uh, I sell fish. You also sell fish. Mm. Then we decide to put our capital together and against the coastal sellers. Coast. <laughs> I mean, so you, you, you. I mean, I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm not here to to discourage people, but yeah. I'm saying, look, that's the truth. However, let my mouth and my mind not be the final. Yeah. I'm only postulating. I'm not. I'm only. I, 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 I think people's um, people's interest in this. Um, alliance is more to do with the ability to shave away numbers from the political establishment like that the NDC MPP right right especially the MPP 
at this time because of who Allen is and having come away from um, the MPP as a stalwart of that party, it's possible that some of the uh, maybe from party people who are not going to shift uh, you know, from the party are saying that, look, he's one of us. He's maybe we are leaning more towards him. Of course, you know people like um, Ohini Nto and others are all in that camp now. Right. There's a whole group of MPP people who, was, who are stalwarts of the party and have shifted. So it's possible Let, that they may create some kind of a movement. There, there would them. always be the impact. Politics are about the numbers, like mm. you and I know. Mm. But there's always a time to also look at um, the figure and who is following. Okay. Uh, you know, when you go to families, there are some people when they speak, mm. they don't need to be there. They can even leave a word yeah. and the impact is there. Mm. So you're right. I mean, they will have some impact. They have some following. These are persons who have been in the limelight. But the people you've mentioned, Let's look at their weight in winning elections mm. in, within their party. Okay. They fell out. I mean, you know, even to, you know, all the people you mentioned, after some time contesting again, they fell out. Yeah. Allah himself fell out. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the whole, the, the kind of weight he carries after their primaries, yeah. you saw where he was standing. Yeah. So clearly, you can see, I mean, like I told you, it's, like, it's still like a tabletop, you know, sell, the two tabletop sellers coming together against a coastal operator. So you, you would you, you would just look at it from that in, angle. In a game of politics mm. where three, four percent be needed. makes a difference. Even one percent. Yeah. I mean, people won elections with five hundred thousand yeah. votes. Yeah. So I'm saying so they'll have Which their fraction of they'll have percent. their day. Yeah. They'll have their day. Yeah. If if it goes into a runoff, yeah. that's when you need just about thousand it's yeah. fifty plus one in Ghana. Yeah. So when you have split it plus just one vote. So so no individual vote, I mean mm. one vote. Is, you can downplay it when you are talking on a normal day when the difference is like 62,000 against yeah. this. Then you can go to court, they'll say, oh, mm. we found this very vote that should have gone this way, but went this way. But it's not significant. Mm. If, you, if you follow the, the, the electoral di dispute when uh, uh, the, the famous judge uh, Atuguba was, uh, I mean, giving his final word, he gave some of the things that were worrying, okay. some of the issues on the faces of a pink sheet, some of the issues that some, some parts. There was under voting, over voting, but how significant it was is also key. So for me, I like I like to state one thing. One, it's not novel, but it's good that people can see now. In fact, it's also a warning shot to the two big parties. Mm. You know, these ones are forming, they are forming. You need them at some point. Mm. So the utterances I tell everybody when you fall out of political understanding or negotiations, you keep them around. Mm. But I, I will tell you my fact. It's good to have all those political parties, but like I've told you, in Ghana, it's a two to shoot out, you know? It's, you go to religion, Christian and Muslim, you go to football, hearts and kotoko, yeah. you know, so it's like that. It's always been like this, it's in politics, it's NDC and NPP. Okay. Someday to come, I mean, you can have another two shoot, shoot up again, but we are not into the three, four counts. Like you said, all over the world sometimes, there are even countries where it's also long standing democracies, like Democrats and Republicans, you know, so you, you always look at it from that angle. And I think the idea, yeah, unity is, uh, you, they, they say in unity lies strength. Mm. But more will be gone. I mean, I've just said in my analytical space what I think. And I hope if you, if you consult some of the senior, uh, maybe senior poster like Ben Epstein, <laughs> they, 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 they also had his analysis. But why are you laughing, though? Why am I laughing? Yes. No, I just like the way you mentioned his name in yes. passing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a poster. I mean, it's yeah. a, okay. Maybe he will come out to tell you also <laughs> that, look, this, these ones are very easy ones for all of us. Respect to Enkosi Aga. And I can say it on authority, not even 5% for the two of them. Okay, fantastic. Mesa, your thoughts on where we are with um, this alliance and its possible yeah. impact on the coming elections. This is a very interesting, no, the first time I saw the story, I thought it was a joke, you know, <laughs> because it was, we were getting around April Fool Day, so I thought it was <laughs> one of those, you know, April Fool gimmicks you are, that you people. You are some way, you are some way. <laughs> that people threw out, you know, but I think uh, consequently I saw, you know, that, you know, there was some truth in, 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 in that story and, you know, we, we continue to see a report on that. 
Um, it's not a bad, you know, uh, decision for two uh, politicians to decide to join their forces if they believe that that could give them an, any form of electoral advantage. Mm -hmm. um, we have, in fact, advocated for the smaller political parties yeah. to come together to form, you know, a united force that could proportionately compete mm. with the two main giant political parties. Unfortunately, the problem has always been who leads the alliance, mm. if the alliance is so formed. And that has always been a challenge. I don't know who is going to lead this particular alliance, whether it is Dr. It's Abu Sakara who is going to lead with Alan as his running mate or Alan yeah, as Alan. the main candidate and Dr. Abu Sakara as in So Alan is going to lead yes. the charge. So then, then that brings me to the point that uh, I want to, you know, highlight the modesty of Dr. Abu Sakara to even decide to enter into such an alliance and okay. decide to be a running mate to a first-time presidential candidate, even though he's been on the ballot mm. before. And mm. I think that is something that we must commend. It's, it, it's a very fine gesture. You know, you don't see that level of modesty in our body politics. Mm. And so some of these things must be highlighted. Um, I'm yet to get the crust of the message of this alliance, you know, We've heard them say so many things about breaking the duopoly, you know, trying to, you know, make sure that the mismanagement, abandoned project mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. have you are mm -hmm. all taken care yeah. of. Um, they are all fine political languages. The question is, what is the crust of their political message? And I think that in the coming day, that's what we want to see. Um, any form of you know political plurality is important. It's very good for our, for the development of our democracy. Mm -hmm. We 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 need people to be actively involved. Very soon, I want to see my brother Okansi even contest as an in, a press, contest as president as an independent candidate or <laughs> or whatever he does. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, let's see. You know, the principle of universal adult suffrage does not rest only on one's ability to, to vote, but also to present yourself to vote as well. Mm. Um, I've always been against the, the age, the presidential age limit, where you have to be 40 years, or, uh, uh, and then if a member of parliament, you need to be 21 years. Mm. At 18, I'm well qualified and deemed by law to be of sound mind to make a choice of who run the affairs of this country. You cannot tell me that in that vein, I cannot put myself up for position. So I always say that these limits should be resolved. The principle of natural selection and economic conditions will eliminate people who are ineligible in the first place. Okay. For example, an 18 year old person, you know, based on economic conditions, may, may, may struggle or may, may be highly impossible to put themselves up to contest in mm -hmm. presidential elections. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the system already advantages them. So there's no point putting all those, you know, legal place. restrictions. Mm. It, precedent. I mean, you cannot say that. Um, I actually believe there should be an upper limit. It, it, the, the, the emphasis should be on, on an upper limit, yeah, not I think there should be an not limit. not a lower limit, mm. because I, I, countries are having countries we go to borrow from mm. are having precedents age 35. Mm. Yeah. 36, you know, and we are sitting here, you know, in all our nothingness after 67 years trying to put uh, restrictions on who, on at what age people are eligible and, and whatnot. All these things which are, are not necessary. We need to create a very young, robust, energetic leadership in this country, you know, and give young people the opportunity to also contribute their quota. Uh, young people have continued to play a lot of roles you know, in the development of our democracy. 
So this is a very important alliance, and I, I, I want to celebrate the two of them for that particular you know, connection um, and, the, and, and, and the joint you know, decision to come together and see if they can be able to make an impact. The next election is going to be very critical. And, and um, Mr. Kansi, let, let us not underestimate the role of other con competing you know, personalities or political parties in the yeah. upcoming elections. Because the upcoming election is going to be fiercely contested, and even 1% of the votes could make a difference. And so anybody putting themselves up for whatever their strength may be should not be underestimated. <coughs> we want to see that this kind of alliance will put the two main political parties on their toes so they don't take us for granted. I've said that these elections, we are not going to entertain comedies and jokes and, jokes and funny dances. We are going to require you know, politicians to come and tell us what they can do to salvage you know, the dying the, the already dead Ghanaian economy, the suffering masses, you know, and all the hardships that have been inflicted on the people of Ghana for the last seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we are going to be very, very demanding of the politicians in these elections. And so let nobody think that they can come to us and say all manner of things, throw all manner of promises, and dance funny dances, and we are going to change our mind and vote for them. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Um, any, any further comments on this? Well, I think... Um, I need to still say my facts. I, 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 I when, when, the, when you look forward for the splits, if there's a split, you know, there's truth about when you gauge from 1992 to date, when they started con contesting, you've noticed one thing that the two parties always they go beyond their 35% threshold. Mm. I mean, you, you can give a 40 to the two of them at any time. Mm. And so when there's a new pullout, you can easily you can easily predict our elections to yeah. say that they all go beyond their forty. Yeah, that's how, that's where I pegged it, uh, Mensa. That's where I pegged it. That like you always see NDC and MPP pull their forty. Yeah, that makes them the force to reckon. Like you rightly said, another alliance that comes into into play will dis can decide, and that's why we, we, I think we said that it's only f it's fifty plus one, mm. yeah. just one vote. So yeah. you are very right. I mean, if it gets to that level where they they they, they have to, if they've not already set up. Then, then I mean, we said they should set up. I mean, if they've not sat up already from the voices around, what has played in parliament for the NDC and MPP should tell you how Ghanaians are deciding. And it's going Ghanians to be really very maturing. interesting but you, you if the election goes for a second round. It's yeah. going to be very, but, very interesting. But you know right. what I find? If it goes for a second round. Right, right. Well, okay, before mm. you, 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 you share, because I, I want to hear what you think when you say the interest, interesting as to what are the dynamics you foresee? Um, but how come it is that for the last 32 years or so, it's like this duopoly has developed and they, it's, it seems to be coming more entrenched, you know, as time goes by. Meanwhile, in the 70s, we had uh, Hillary Mann's party, PMP. PMP. Then we had uh, Oforiate's party, UNC. Then we have Victor Wusu's party, yeah. PFP. You know, and they, they were all there and they were competing. If you look at some of the numbers in the elections, they were not that far apart. So where they, it's like they all disappeared. Mm. Cool. Okay. And then we have a re, an emergence of two new parties, but it's like a duopoly now. Cool. Cool. You, you, you seem to forget that. I think after the 1984, or 83 coup d'etat, or, uh, or 82. Uh, so, yeah, 81, 81 was the last, yeah. 31st December. The, yeah. Yes, the revolution. Mm. Yes. There was a ban on political parties okay. for a very long okay. time until the inception of the 1992 constitution that created opportunity for other parties. Now, if you look at how our political structure mm. system is, of course, the PNDC, which metamorphosed into NDC, had been in government throughout, through, mm. throughout this period, have enjoyed a certain level of visibility, have had access to resources, and so could develop you know, easily into a very already grounded political party. Okay. The opposition element, who had also been behind the scenes knocking on the doors of the military regime, mm. you know, advocating for us to transition to democratic rule, also came together 
And at that point, they needed to come together to be able to make any form of impact, impact. against the yeah. PNDC who had, okay. who had almost been entrenched in the system. Okay. And so they, they, the introduction or the inception of NPP mm. on the political scene sort of swallowed all those anti-PNDC elements okay. or opposition members mm. at the time to the regime. And that you know, created that duopoly right from the beginning of this uh, Republican democracy. Mm. Now, that was the foundation. What has made them entrenched? There are two key factors. The first is political dominance. Mm. The next is financial resources. Okay. E political dominance as in, you know, the, the, the personalities involved in these parties. Okay and their connectedness to the system, mm. various mm. aspects mm. of our key state mm. institutions and okay. even their background. Okay. Then money. In this country, no political party can survive more than eight years in opposition. Mm. More than eight years in opposition. I, I agree with that. Because of how expensive our politics is. Mm. And so the moment a party <clears throat> is out of government, for more than two terms, forget it. NPP or NDC, whichever party, you know, incidentally, unfortunately, find themselves at that age, will suffer a huge catastrophe. Mm. Because parties in government are funded hugely on the back of the state resources. And based on these same resources, they're able to, you know, empower key individuals both in business, okay. both in politics, okay. Okay. who would then in turn to come, a, back, to and in turn come okay. back to support okay. them okay. when they are out of government okay. for another eight years mm. to bring them to power. Mm. Mm. And that, that has been the alternating yeah. machinery between the NPP and the NDC. So this one takes eight years, they're able to save. Now, the NDC, for seven years in opposition, you can imagine, as broke as hell. <laughs> you understand? The NPP has all the resources. Yeah. The only flip side is that NPP has money in these elections. The NDC has goodwill, mm. goodwill of the people. Mm. And so you need a fine combination of resources and goodwill, goodwill. to be able to win an election. Yeah. Unfortunately, all of them are trailing in the other. One is trailing in resources, the other is trailing in goodwill. It's going to be very critical how these elections, you know, is going to come up. Mm. But, you know, that is the basis for some of this, this mm. duopoly. And until some parties, for whatever intervention they get, both monetary and logistic-wise, mm. to be able to penetrate, first, by making a very fine presence in parliament, a, a relatively sizable presence in parliament, then ever having the opportunity to govern this country, yeah it is going to be very, very difficult to break this duopoly. Okay, fantastic. We're having conversations about the 2024 elections and um, the alliance that's been formed uh, between Alain Tremantin's movement and Abu Sakara's movement. Uh, Jeffrey, you, I think you wanted to say something quickly and then we can move yeah, on. Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, the security of elections is very important. We should place also value mm -hmm. in the issues after after having the parties stand firm for the competition the rules of a game must be adhered to and also we should make it more more of what we are feeling we are hearing the fuel costs going up we mm. can people are feeling it but let's have a discussion and, and and accept everybody's views let's let's see more of parties coming out with issues mm. you know mm. the personal attacks and you know should stay out for okay. some time now and let's have issues let's talk about them all right i mean uh, it's all about people are being paid their salaries what are they are they doing with it they are, they are buying food they are renting some are not even able to talk, think about even tourism in ghana mm. you know so so let's see how uh, we need to have some luxury to to attach to all the struggles in life no so let's see let's talk about our our, our growth together mm. let's mm. set the agenda i mean cso's media we're not saying we are the wise ones but i mean we're saying let's set the agenda and bring the political parties to the table, big discussions, and all agree on something. Mm. That's why I'm also worried that we have a National Development Planning Commission. Let's have an authority, with an in independent person sitting there to tell us, look, this is what we have developed for the next 10, five years. Mm. This is what we want, we want to run on. All political parties, bring your views in achieving what we have all agreed on achieving. So we can all move forward.
All right, okay.